cultural context Bible that gives a whole bunch of uh, cultural background and stuff out. And so I've been up this morning, spending some time in the Word, both in Luke and then uh, just prepping for our uh, teaching in Acts. And so I don't know if you've got more than one version of the Bible that you keep handy, but it's always a good idea. And so a lot of times nowadays, um, everything's available on here. I also have my uh, Bible app on my phone so I can swap between versions quickly um, and read a different translation for a passage. So anyways, that's just kind of a little behind the scenes thing on what it looks like to dig in and, and look at different versions or different commentaries and just kind of be challenged and grow. So let me pray for us and then we're going to jump back into Luke this morning. All right, let's pray. God, we love you. Thanks for your word. Thanks for the brilliant people that made these different translations available to us and all that we can glean and learn from. And uh, just keep teaching us and helping us grow uh, to be more like your son. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in Luke 6. and We've been taking a look at um, just this week. We started looking at the Beatitudes, these blessing statements. And and in Luke chapter 6, verse 21, there's one that says, um, Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. And the kind of corresponding woe in verse 25 is, Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. And so the question sort of becomes for a lot of us in the Western world, kind of logical, uh, linear thinkers is, how do, what's the solution to this problem? Like, what exactly is Jesus saying here when he said, blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied? Is he talking about um, literal, concrete hunger? Is he saying that if you are hungry, if you haven't eaten for a few days, that you're blessed and you're going to be satisfied? Or is this a metaphor? Is he saying that that those of you that are um, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, like you, you hunger and have an appetite to know God and follow Him. That 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 kind of hunger is going to lead to you being satisfied. Like, what exactly is He trying to say? And it's interesting. I'm doing a men's group with uh, some guys on Thursday nights, and we're going through um, one of the Rabbi Jesus books that uh, Lois. To Verberg, however you say her last name, I don't know. Um, and in that book, one of the things we've been learning about as a group of guys is this idea of paradox that in our kind of American Western minds, we don't like paradoxes. We don't like multiple things that can be true you know, at the same time. We want, we want a solution. We want a clear, linear line of thinking and truth. And in the Eastern world, in the Jewish culture, a paradox is a real normal thing. There can be multiple things that are true about something. And and I kind of want to just challenge us this morning as we're looking at this passage. That's exactly what's going on here is there are multiple things that are true about this. Blessed are you who are hungry now for you shall be satisfied. Does God care about those who are oppressed and literally hungry? Absolutely. Does God care about those who are hungering and thirsting for righteousness that that have an appetite and a desire to be right with God to know God absolutely um, Jesus in uh, Matthew 5 6 he said that uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled and so here we have this imagery out of Jesus himself saying something that lines up with a uh, uh, interpretation of the beatitude that if you're hungering and thirsting for righteousness, righteousness is in a the most plain English way I could explain it is to be right with God. You're square with God. There's no ought between you. You're He's good with you. You're good with Him. That's righteous. And so when you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you desire it like like when you are, you know, five hours behind having lunch, like, and you can't wait to get a break to get something to eat. Like there's this, this appetite is drawing you to want food. That's that same way of uh, hungering for righteousness. You're being drawn by something inside of you to, to desire to uh, feed the need to be right with God. And so Jesus says, that's awesome because you're going to be filled, right? And in the Beatitude, he says, you'll be satisfied. Um, 
the woe is that those of you that are, um, and then that he was speaking to, and now that are kind of already full, you already just sort of, just sort of go through life feeling like you're good, like you've got it all figured out. He's like, yeah, there's a big woe there. There's a big caution because you sort of, you've already got everything you're going to get. And in the end, you're going to be hungry. You're going to be missing out. Now, the other question is, what about the physical, literal hunger? You know, like, is does God really care about those who are um, starving and don't have enough food to eat? And in Isaiah 58, he's a prophet and he's talking to God's people and he's he's chastising them, kind of busting their chops for the way they were fasting and praying. And they were making a big spectacle of themselves and trying to be really pious and show all this like, um, how religious they were by how they were fasting and with their outward expression of it. And and he goes, he's like, you know, the prophet says to him, you know, and he's speaking for the Lord. He's like, you think that's a fast, right? And so in verse uh, Isaiah 58, verse six, he says, is not this the kind of fasting I've chosen? So he goes on to bust their chops and tells them what they're doing wrong and calls them out. But then he says, this is more like it. This is really the, the kind of fasting. This is what it would look like if you were really pious, if you were really righteous. To loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter uh, when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? And so here we get a glimpse into the heart of God who is speaking directly to people who are uh, showing that they're religious, that they're pious on the outside. And he's calling them out and saying, like, you want to be really religious. You want to be really righteous. You want to be like all that in a bag of chips in God's eyes. Then then cut the oppressed free. Make it easier for the people that work for you. Um, look out for your own flesh and blood. Take care of your family. If you see someone who doesn't have clothes, offer them clothes. If you see someone who doesn't have food, feed them. Like literally, actually feed them. And I think that there's a couple of nuggets this morning as we're unpacking this one is one, it's really good for us to be reminded that um, in scripture, there are a lot of paradoxes. There are things where... Um, multiple things can be true about a passage and we can mine out depth and meaning from a passage and don't don't walk away with it with one resolved crystal clear understanding always like be willing to keep learning and let God's word keep teaching you um, also like practically speaking in the the times that we're in as a lot of people have lost their jobs had their hours cut back been laid off um, there are people in our community who are literally um, hungry and who have a need for food and have a need for help, have a need for um, somebody to pitch in with their Avista bill or their rent check. And, and, and so I would just say, um, those of you that are able, um, put the word out, like make yourself available. Don't, don't always just rely on community organizations and um, people to have to reach the point where they're um, so humbled and embarrassed that they finally break down and ask for help. Instead, reach out to your network of friends and family and people that you have some connection with and spread the word that you're a person that will bring food. You're a person that will pitch in for an Avista bill. Like, um, go out of your way to find people who need help and then just go help them, right? Um, and so to that end, I do want everybody to know, like as a church, we do have an emergency food room. We do have a, a lifelines ministry in our church where we do help people with rent and utilities and emergency expenses, like a, a, you know, a car breaks down and it's the last thing to get them to work. Like if we can help with that, we will. And you can find all the information on our website about how to request help in those things. And if you're in need of food watching this and you're in our community, let us know. Shoot me a direct message um, and we would love to, to help you out with that. We've got the means to do that. And if you're in our church and you're a part of our community and you know of someone in town that needs help, 
um, reach out and I will walk you through where the food room is and how to get in touch with the people that manage it and how to help get folks in our community food. You could swing by and pick the stuff up and actually go and you get to go drop it off for them so they don't have to go through the awkwardness of asking and having to come and, and pick it up. Like sometimes that's just hard to do. And so we want to look out for each other in our community. We want to look out for our family and uh, we want to be a place where we spur each other on to do that ever more. So with that, let me pray and uh, let's get out there and look for people that could use a helping hand uh, today and the rest of the week. So let's pray. God, we love you. You are awesome. You are our God. You are the only God, and we are so grateful for that. Thank you for your word, the, the light it is to direct and guide us. Thank you for um, helping us see the difference between um, wanting to look religious and then actually um, what it looks like to you when we're hitting a home run when it comes to religion, when we're loving people that need loved, when we're serving people that need served, when we're practically giving food and clothing and money and assistance to people that actually need it. Um, God, that that is, um, that is just a, a beautiful thing in your sight, just a deeply Christian, deeply pious person you see that uh, serves and loves other people well. And just help us to be that kind of church and that kind of family. And so we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys have a great Wednesday, and uh, I'll see you back here, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, tomorrow morning at 8 for some more Jesus time. See ya.